soil. Is soil just something so we can uh, have Clorox commercials? You know, it's amazing to me to be in a culture that spends this much time talking about health and wellness and sickness and disease, and nobody ever talks about soil. It was amazing that medical doctors, how much nutrition do you, how much do you talk about food? Zero. Am I missing something here? So I want to talk about soil just for a minute, because I work a lot in soil. And if you take an electron microscope and you look through that finder into the soil, you'll see a, you'll see a four-legged boop, 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 boop thing, you know, kind of walking along like a cow. You know, he's got mandibles and sal- salivating, grazing on cilia. He's walking along, you know, comes in about six o'clock on the viewfinder, you know. All of a sudden, galloping in from two o'clock is a six-legged narwhal-looking thing with a, with a spear on the end of his nose. He comes in, impales the side of the bloop the doop the thing, and sucks out all the juices, desiccates the bloop the doop the thing right there, you know, in front of your eyes. And then, and then before the bloop can even fall, in from 10 o'clock comes charging a ten-legged centipede-looking thing with scissors on his head. I mean, imagine that. It's not even a costume party. He comes running in with scissors and goes whack and knocks off the head of the bloop the bloop the thing, you know, and eats it. You know, doesn't even use a napkin, you know. He doesn't say grace, doesn't do anything. He just eats it up. And all this is happening in like two seconds in the viewfinder of the electromagnetic, uh, electro whatever thing. The viewfinder. The thing is, this is happening with trillions and trillions of critters and beings, all the way from actinomycetes to mycorrhizae to earthworms and, and all of this invisible life that you and I are utterly and completely dependent on. And yet, we don't see it talked about on the Dow Jones Industrial Averages. You know, when's the last time you went into a bank with a business plan and the banker sits back in his chair and he says, oh, well, this is a great business plan. This is wonderful. We're going to be millionaires because I'm going to be your partner. But I have one question before we loan money for this venture. What's it going to do to the actinomycetes? And yet, this invisible world in the soil and in fact, now we know that they actually communicate with each other. I mean, they have, you know, school board meetings and political races and Ted Med talks down there. You know, they got all sorts of things going on. And we have three trillion of them inside of us. Three trillion of them. And these beings talk to, you know, each other. They're, they're you know, ones in the soil are coming into us. And, and, and this is a community of beings that is desperate for us to embrace and dance with this community of beings. And we, as a culture, have decided, well, they don't matter. They're just machines. Because in our Greco-Roman, Western, reductionist, linear, compartmentalized, fragmentized, systematized, parts-oriented, individualized, all about me kind of thinking... We don't embrace the view that this is a world of beings. We see a world of machines. And so our U.S. duh and our F duh (laughs) and their fraternity of industrial food farming and pharmaceutical companies have gotten together and decided that life is really a mechanical thing, not a living thing. It's actually... It's actually machines and not biology. I mean, when's the last time that you heard a researcher say, let's, let's research how to make pigs happier, how to make tomato plants happier? No, it's all about inanimate piles of protoplasmic structure to be manipulated however cl- cleverly hubris can imagine to manipulate them. And I would suggest that a culture that views its life from that kind of egocentric, dominant, conquistador mentality will view its citizens the same way. And other, and other cultures the same way. So the joy of my life is being able to get up every morning and embrace this community of beings that dances in the soil, that dances in the field, and wants to embrace me, not 
in a wrestling match, not as some sort of an enemy, but as a lover so that I can massage this ecological umbilical instead of just manipulate it. And so what we have in our culture is we have a mechanistic view toward life to where we chemical fertilize, we we use herbicides and pesticides, and and, and everything is looked at from a, a system of chemistry and physics and machinery rather than living substances. You know, it's, it's almost as if there's way, you know, that, that um, 10, 10, 10 and herbicides and 2,4-T and DDT were way more sexy than Sir Albert Howard's compost pile. And I would say there's a lot more sex going on in a compost pile than there is a bag of 10, 10, 10. And so our culture divorced itself from, from, this, from these normal visceral relationships with life. We abdicated this ecological umbilical anchorage in our lives. I mean, you know, epitomized probably during the 1950s and 60s when we decided that something that was as nurturing and natural and living as breastfeeding suddenly became barbaric in Neanderthal and we raised a generation of asthmatics on uh, Infamil and Similac. And I've often thought, you know, what a terrible waste of resource, all those breasts that never got used for 20 years. A terrible waste of resource. And, 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 we, ha- and we had the, the scientists at the U.S. D- at the US duh, uh, wine and dine farmers like me, take us to, to, te- to, t- to uh, TV dinners. No, they took us to steak dinners and, 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 and told us about this new science of where we grind up dead cows and we feed them back to cows. Now, you see, we didn't embrace that not because we hated the USDA or were anti-progressive or anti-science or Luddites or anything like that. We did not embrace that scientific epiphany discovery because we could not find a template in nature in which herbivores eat carrion. So we were embracing the cowness of the cow when everyone else was embracing just proteinaceous material. And now, of course, we buy and sell and patent life and transgenic modification, create brand new life forms and send them out on, you know, sexual orgies through uh, um, uh, cultures and on the jet stream to create brand new life forms that, that now have all sorts of these big uh-ohs from, from false intolerance to spontaneous abortions to all sorts of big problems, these unintended consequences due to the mechanistic view toward life. I would suggest that in our discussions of high-tech and techno-glitzy things, that we need to make a fundamental move toward embracing life and toward toward embracing biology. Because, see, there's a fundamental difference. Machines don't heal. Living things can heal. You go out of here today and you have a thump, thump, thump in your right front wheel bearing. You can walk around to the front of that car and you can say, oh, please forgive me for not lubricating you. I'm so sorry. You know, what can I do to make it right? I mean, uh, uh, I apologize. Would you like some rest? You know, I'll let you rest a couple days. You can do anything. You can rest five years. And when you get back in the car, what's it going to do? Thump, thump, thump. But the landscape... Plants and animals can heal. And so what we've moved to in this, this, this divorcement and this lack of recognition of this community of b- beings that wants to dance with us and wants us to nurture and massage and, and, and love it, we've, we've created a dead food system. We've created a food system of, of Velveeta cheese that won't even rot. I mean, you know, if food won't rot, it won't digest. I ran into a couple ladies in California. They have a vermicomposting bin. They do a, do a farm-to-school program with children. And the first thing they do is bring the kids out and take uh, uh, white, you know, white nutritionally enhanced uh, junk bread and ball it up and put it in the, in the earthworm bed. And they take some, you know, fresh-baked uh, whole wheat stuff, bread, and they ball it up, put it in the uh, earthworm bed. When the kids come, kids come back two weeks later, over here, 
They look in there, they can't find the bread anywhere. The worms ate it. They go over here, they pull it out. It's about like a soccer ball, same way they put it in, you know. And, 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 and the question is, why would you want to eat something worms won't even eat? <laughs> you know, if food, if food won't rot, if it's unpronounceable, <laughs> if you can't make it in your kitchen, it probably isn't something you want to eat. And on our modern farms today, our industrial farms with no trespassing signs and, 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 and sheep dip and hazmat suits. I mean, if you've got to walk through sheep dip, put on a hazmat suit to go visit your food, you might not want to eat it. I mean, and we've got an entire food safety bureaucracy now, they call them the food police, that's telling us it's perfectly safe to feed your kids Twinkies, Cocoa Puffs, and Mountain Dew, but that raw milk, compost-grown tomatoes, free-range chickens, and Aunt Matilda's pickles might kill you. That's how insane we've become at our obsession with the mechanics of everything. Instead of appreciating that this is a vibrant, verdant community of beings. And fundamentally, we need to ask, how do we enhance the life of the cow? How do we enhance the life of the tomato? How do we create nutrient density? And so my challenge to us today is for all of us to resolve today, right now, to begin participating in this wonderful community of beings that wants to embrace us as a lover. And if we love her, she will love us back more than we can imagine. Imagine. And that community of beings to participate in doesn't take an act of Congress. It doesn't take tomorrow. It's as simple as, as going out and finding a local farmer and visiting that farmer. It's as simple as growing a garden. It's as simple as putting a a beehive on the top of your house. It's as simple as getting some pots and growing some tomatoes in. It's as simple as getting two chickens for your apartment. You know, get rid of the dog, get rid of the cat, get rid of the aquarium, get rid of the parakeet. Put in two chickens, you know, they eat all your chicken scraps. Now you don't even have to put it on the diesel truck to go to the compost pile to reintroduce it to your rose garden. You know, you, the chickens are right there. Two chickens only make a fifth of manure of one dog. And they're far more useful. Then you won't even, if we, had, if we had chickens next to every kitchen in the United States, we wouldn't even have an egg commerce or, or a debate about inhuman, inhumane factory farming. You know, we can participate in this. Edible landscaping, you know, why can't we take our college campuses, grid them all out in GPS stuff, have a phone app for all the students, and, and get rid of the, the, the ornamentals and put in edibles, and, and so every day the student gets up and, well, the strawberries are ready in quadrant 348, you know, and, and, and they can go and graze between classes. And fundamentally, we can participate every time we get in our kitchens. Look, you got to kick the supermarket habit. I mean, there's no reason that you can't prepare, package, and preserve food in your kitchen in season. And don't tell me you don't have time. You don't have to go to Starbucks. You, you, you don't have to go to Disney World. You don't have to go on a Caribbean cruise or buy lottery tickets. Or, or, or The first thing you need to do to participate is take your deer rifle out and put it through your TV set. Toss it out. Then... <laughs> You'll have the time and the energy. The average American male between the ages of 25 and 35 spends 20 hours a week playing video games. We can spend that time participating with a community of beings that wants to embrace us, dance with us, and create a life of faith instead of fear, or create a life of massage instead of of, of, um, of wrestling and create a life of encouragement and participatory joy rather than fear, paranoia, and scarcity. We can do it. We can participate right now, today. God help us to do it. Thank you so much for letting me visit with you. Thank you.